Hello, MC Starman here with AC Starman. Oh, yes, out in the garden. Alan and Martin, and we're in the garden trying something new. I hope that the experience is nice for you. Mm -hmm. How do you feel the, the these Whew. crazy times? Yeah, man. Um, it's been uh, been a bit of a, a bit of a roller coaster at the moment, and uh, like I was saying before, it seems to be a bit of a pendulum swing between hope and despair. <laughs> is what I said to you earlier. Like, there's a little bit of I keep swinging back and forth. I see this moment of like, oh, okay, things are good, things are good, and then um, and I'm like, oh, really? Yeah, this is happening. And that's kind of what I've been experiencing the last little while. Yeah. A little while ago, we came up with that the sentence huh, that there's something really highly creative with despair about despair. You know, oh, despair yeah. is 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 actually the place where we can pray. You know, that's the place where we can really actually bring about change. And I was writing that in my journal this morning, you know, mm -hmm. what's the function of pain? What is the function of misery, mm -hmm. you know, and how any, um, any, uh, any growth that we make spiritually, mm -hmm. it involves a great deal of pain. Mm -hmm. It's just, you know, it seems like the price that we pay for an increased awareness and increased consciousness is pain. So that misery, that, uh, that, um, that despair, as you uh, call it, is actually the process of becoming more conscious, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. you know, and, and I think that becoming more conscious of what we're going through I was actually in, in quite a bit of tension over the last couple of days and I was thinking, okay, what is this about? And so then uh, I pulled the charts of, of the last few days and the, put, pulled the chart of today. And we're going to share that chart with you today mm -hmm. um, in trying to understand, uh, you know, what all of this tension that we're feeling is about. Mm -hmm. um, it's funny you say that actually, because just this morning, my mom sent me a, a, a text with a roomy quote that popped up on her app at home that she has. And it was about that, like the, the pain that we feel is, 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 a, is a messenger of some sort. Mm -hmm. right? I can't remember the quote verbatim, but yeah, it's uh, there are messages in these pains that we feel and we've got to really sort of open up that, that consciousness and be, be more conscious about it. Let that come through. I had a dream like that uh, over the winter where basically the pain was the teacher mm -hmm. you know the pain was the teacher yeah it was a priest that happened that showed up in my dream and he was teaching me but then as he was walking away because he was he had to go he had this serious serious limp huh. so the 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 teacher is the pain right um, yeah so this is the chart of today. Uh, that's April. Um, April. Hello, June. <laughs> it feels like April, but it, it does, is June. It? It's nice to be in the garden. Uh, by the way, I want to brag about my first peony right there. You can see. <laughs> and also, oh, no, you can't see because we're not. But uh, I'll brag about my flowers later uh, when you can see them. But uh, so first thing that comes up to us is that moon Pluto conjunction. So that's mm. today, Moon Pluto. So the, you know, the the sacred feminine, the lunar reflective energy, the 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 need for introversion, the need for nurturing and love, motherly love with the Pluto, the ancestral great mother, the ancestral race. So that Moon Pluto, that's never easy. Mm -hmm. <coughs> Connection with <coughs> with the devouring mother. And then the other conjunction, and I think that that's really what really resonated with me in terms of what was going on right now, is today the exact conjunction of Mars and Chiron. Mm -hmm. So our will, um, yeah. uh, and then the wounded healer and having to face, you know, the reality, and that's a square. So we have the Chiron, Mars, Moon, Pluto, square. And then we also have 
a Venus Uranus conjunction. And so that, and you know, so, mm. so this is a perfect example of personal planets. So moon, Venus and Mars moon representing the nurturing mothering aspect of our personality mars the hero the call to action the will uh, and then venus the creative um, mm -hmm. nature the what we love the joy of life those three functions are associated with three functions that are collective functions the need to die and be reborn to you know to something that more resembles ourself pluto mm -hmm. uh, the facing of the ancestral rage chiron the wounded healer what is wounded within me so that i can become the healer that i want to be you know so that mars chiron moon pluto and then venus you know and how that feels uranus uranus we were talking about this earlier how uranus is the need for freedom and in the chart it's represented as where we feel trapped you know so that venus mm -hmm. you know it, uh, in conjunction with uranus that mars in conjunction to chiron and that moon in conjunction to pluto those are beginnings of you know cycles that we're going to follow as the year goes by um mm -hmm yeah that's cool man i when you try to merge those energies together the sort of emotions and the wounds and the creativity and the, you know that venus mm -hmm. it's like um it seems that we're trying to free our um our pains you know we're trying to trying to like even with the mars and chiron it's like let's cut out that wound it's like let's let's do the work necessary to get into that wound and then free our creativity and sort of reset our emotions with that pluto moon right like right um you know the death of um a form of nurturing to rebirth a new nurturing and with it in uh capricorn there you know there's definitely uh how can we I don't know. I feel like there's almost like a par parenting yourself in a way. Like how can parenting we... yourself? You know, like yeah. The the moon is what we associate as being home too, huh? And right. Pluto, you know, the insecurity, you know, feeling yeah. insecurity in a home, feeling yeah. a need to transform, and and also to to really. Um, I had a a, a a friend of mine just reached out with a dream and and she was experiencing all of her family and she was building a sweat lodge for her family mm -hmm. for her ancestors and so that made us think of you know this this summer solstice that is approaching so summer solstice is the sun coming into cancer and so, you know, in a few days here on the 21st, the sun is going to enter cancer. And that's a very important astrological time. And it's a very important, important time to do rituals and to do um, spiritual practices. And so the, the sun will be in quinsunk with Pluto when it enters into uh, uh, cancer. So taking some time uh to honor your connection with the ancestors and 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 how they uh, manifest in your process and and uh, the this process of absolution you know of, of preparing food as a sacrifice for the ancestors to you know release them of their sins and to feed them and to nurture them in the afterworld in the the other world and so um, um that moon pluto and then the mars chiron right the warrior for healing and then you know and we talked about this before you know mm -hmm. how we're trying to move into our creativity but somehow it's so difficult we yeah. feel like you know trapped into 
having to work, 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 go, 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 and not having time for nurturing of our creativity, kind of feeling trapped in that, kind of feeling blocked creatively. That's yeah. also, it's interesting. Huh? So yet Venus, Uranus makes a semi sextile to Mars Chiron mm -hmm. and both of them connect with moon Pluto. Mm -hmm. So that's kind of a and then yeah and then even the Uranus Venus makes a trine with the Pluto moon. Mhm. Mm mhm. Mm so there's a lot of connection with all those parts of our psyche. <laughs> and and then the sun also quinsung to that moon yeah. Pluto so so this is kind of a symbolization of what it is, feels like. So, so we try to symbolize and understand, you know, you know, so astrology being a big mirror of what it is that we feel and go through. And so this is a perfect mm. example of, of looking at um, um, a chart to get insight into why I'm uh, feeling uh these energies that i'm feeling and mm. and and um and so that's you know fascinating am i am, am i right in saying i think what i've read before about the quincunx is that uh it's kind of a blind spot it's almost like you know that shoulder check that you don't quite check in the car right it's like that um there's something could be hanging out there that you can't see and so with the sun quincunx the pluto moon it's almost like our vitality or our identity that sun mm -hmm. that, that that it can't it's it's unaware of that pluto moon emotional death right like right that. so um yeah i think looking at the chart allows us to see what we're maybe not seeing in our day-to-day -day life you know well yeah well, is that what you think of a quincunx or what's your experience of well, quinsunks are, are, you know, it's called in conjunct, right? Right. It's like 150 uh, degrees. 150 degrees. And and what's interesting about an in, uh, an in conjunct, a quinsunk, is because they're in conflicting polarities. So right. an opposition is in the same polarity. So you have two feminine signs or two masculine signs. Right. And in conjunct is from a masculine to a feminine sign. Mm -hmm. And so then it's 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 a confrontation that's more tense. You know, so these green lines. So we have the semi sextile, which is a 30 degree. And then we have the in conjunct, which are 150. Both of those in the chart are marked with green lines. And and to me, I call them an integrative aspect. Mm -hmm. They force you to integrate conflicting elements and conflicting polarities so that the tension is such it's it's in a sense it's more difficult in opposition mm -hmm. it requires more of a dialogue between opposing energies mm -hmm. so um does that make sense to yeah you? yeah totally let's shed some light on it for sure yeah yeah so i'm just curious about that sun being in conjunct the pluto moon and what that you know what that might represent mm -hmm. and then we, we were having a discussion earlier and i i i was talking to to alan about um, uh, volume 18 of the collected works of carl jung this is a this is a printing that came out of India a number of years ago, um, an edition. Uh, but uh, volume 18 is a uh, uh, big one, 850 pages. And <laughs> this is my first time through it. And and um, and then I came with the quote that was really under interesting. And what I've been confronting a lot, and I don't know if you guys are the same, and I don't know if you are, uh, are the same, but there's a certain type of personality we're confronted with mm -hmm. that you know and 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 i think that you know without naming a name mm -hmm. we can talk about our political leaders but also our leaders of industry and our leaders of government institutions you know i i, I looked at um, at this uh, crisis that we went through as uh, as a uh, the empowerment of the control freak 
you know, and 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 um, and what what happens? Why are we confronted with with uh, with so much? You know, to call it a spade a spade, so much lying, so much deception. Why why is our government not in service to the people? Uh, and why are the people that manage our lives, our bosses, our our managers, why um, are they so they so bent on making life more difficult for us? And I think that that's a big confrontation mm -hmm. that we're having is life has become so complex that we are forced to go, 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 go for really minimal rewards and for really a sense of, you know, at least, you know, the the vulnerable part of society, the ones that are not wealthy, uh, the struggle is incredible for all of us. Um, and so why why this this control freak uh, kind of um, um, are, are you running with the same kind of stuff? Yeah. Oh, yeah, totally. Yeah. I mean, I mentioned it to you before we started running the video here, just being faced with this, uh, what seems like a uh, neurotic behavior, um, the things that don't seem to make any logical sense um, are being pushed to, you know, it's just, just, just doesn't make much sense when you see what's happening in the, in the bigger picture. So yeah, there's some, some strange behaviors <laughs> that I see. Strange, strange behavior. This is a, this is a, so volume 18 is a collection of really obscure, not obscure, but things that didn't get published in the first four, seven, the first 17 volumes <clears throat> and who were, it who, 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 who was worthy of publishing. And this is a short little two page uh, article, which is answer to Mishmar on Adolf Hitler. This is a reporter uh, in Geneva um that works for mishmar the daily guardian in tel aviv and this is um a series of questions that he posed on june uh, on september 4th of 1945 so that's right after the war or at the conclusion of the war and the question he asks is how do you as a psychiatrist judge hitler as a patient and and I think that uh, you know it could be really said the same. You know what if uh, what if you did the chart? And I think you were mentioning this. I think we should do the chart of Justin Trudeau. <laughs> yeah, I'd um, love to see and, that. And we've been talking about doing this. You know, we've been talking about doing famous people's charts. Mm -hmm. Yeah. To to kind of help you understand how to read a chart more and to to you know help you see um, how to read you know see your own chart as well. Uh, so kind of a, a way of, you know, and so we're going to do that. Mm -hmm. But um, so this is the answer that Jung gave, uh, gave this reporter. So Hitler was, in my view, primarily an hysteric. Already in the First World War, he had been officially diagnosed as such. So hysteria, we don't use hysteria so much nowadays, but uh, in the beginning of psychology, um, at the beginning of the science of psych psychology, when Freud and Jung uh, got the science of astrology, the practice of, uh, um, of, of psychology going, um, hysteria was a common uh, diagnosis. Um, basically, you're, you know, being an hysterical and you can would take a lot of the current diagnosis that we use uh nowadays you know um uh well bipolar to some extent but we uh, a really popular one is uh, uh a narcissist that we use nowadays mm -hmm. so so hysteria you know uh, uh th those inorganic diseases that trouble us both physiologically you know the 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 pains the psychological pains and the physical pains that we have that don't make any sense. Mm -hmm. And then the hypochondria, chondria, you know, that I'm always, you know, so these are types of hysteria. And so, so Jung says that more 
particularly he was characterized by a subform of hysteria called pseudologia fantastica pseudologia fantastica in other words he was a pathological liar if these people do not start out directly as deceivers they are the sort of idealists who are always in love with their own ideas and who anticipate their aims by presenting their wish fantasies partly as easily attainable and partly as having been attained <clears throat> and who believe these obvious lies themselves. In another, play, in another part, Jung says, uh, there's nothing so powerful as a person who believes uh, in the lies that they say. Mm -hmm. You know, there's nothing so powerful as a lie you believe in. Uh, and, and, and so this uh, pseudologia fantastica is a type of hysteria, a type of mental illness where I believe the lies that I'm telling and, and, and it sounds, so, uh, so sort of idealists who are always in love with their own ideas and who anticipate their aims by presenting their wish fantasies, partly as easily attainable and partly as having already been attained and who believe these obvious lies themselves. In order to realize their wish fantasies, no means is too bad for them, just because they believe they can thereby attain their beloved aim. They believe they are doing it for the benefit of humanity, or at least of the nation, or their party, and cannot under any circumstances see that their, own, their aim is invariably egotistic. Mm -hmm. You know, so that mm. you sound you sound really good, but really everything you're doing is self-serving, and it, and it's this pseudo pseudologia pseudo you know pseudologia that 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 so-called logic that is so fantastic that it sounds so good. It's a delusion. It's a hysteria, and you know, and and so here Jung. Um, invites this diagnosis, and I think we can apply it to a few people we know. Uh, pseudologia fantastica, a type of hysteria. Um, so, mm -hmm. since this is a common failing, it is difficult for the layman to recognize such cases as psychopathic, because only a convinced person is immediately convincing by psychic contagion. Mm. He exercises as a rule of devastating influence on his contemporaries. Almost everybody is taken in by him. Mm. And, and that's really important, you know, because, um, you know, why does a, a leader like Justin Trudeau have so much power on our people? It's because really are we as a culture, as a society, we really resemble that type of madness. You know, mm -hmm. that pseudologia fantastica, he's not the only one that's guilty of it. You know, there's a whole brand of people, you know, what we call the control freaks or the, the people that completely believe this lie so much so that they think they're doing this in the benefit of others. Mm -hmm. So to see it as a, as a psychological diagnosis um, and to, you know, but then what can we do about that? Yeah, I mean, it's like you said, um, you know, we were saying earlier about the, the, whoever's in that place of political power right. is a manifestation of that group collective. There's a, there's a reason they're there. Right? Right. It's, like a, it's like the tip of the iceberg in mm -hmm. a way, right? It's like, this is this, what you see at the top is what's really going on below. So we need to, yeah, I mean, it's, we, we really need to take a long, hard look at ourselves and what we're supporting and, and, and what we're presenting to the world. And if we're being true to ourselves or if we're being 
you know, we're being manipulated or we're trying to fit into a system that we don't really believe in. Or like, being straight out lied to. Yeah. Yeah. Which, but there's this, there's this, there's this kind of like false optimism that people, I don't know, try to like, and maybe that's what this like narcissist ego thing is where it's just lies, but it's like more like a hopefulness than facing the reality of what's happening. I don't know. Yeah. It's the, it's the, uh, it's uh it's uh masking your own agenda and your own insecurity and your own need for power and for asserting your own need to power we're we're dealing with something like that in with my partner's work right now where there's somebody you know the management as that pseudologia fantastica you know they're they're uh you know, they, they believe their lies so much that they think they're doing it in, you know, so they're, they're you know, they're, it's a pathological, it's pathological, you know, we're, yeah. it's actually psychopathology, the soul is sick. And so then how do we deal with that, though? I think that that's really the key, huh? is, is what is the strategy to deal with such a situation? Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> well that you recognize know, the lies like try to really dig into what i don't know maybe what you're personally lying about if there's if there's any lies coming from you that you know it's probably not intentional lies i don't know because we can only really change our own behaviors right we can't change anybody else's well, that's that's beautiful. And, and that's what Jung's essence of his work, he says, basically, that we can't change this collective psychosis unless we change it in ourselves. Mm -hmm. We, you know, he talks about individuation. So the process of self-realization being nothing less than resolving the collective psychosis within yourself. Mm -hmm. You know, so it, it's a great moral choice mm -hmm. that we have to make not to believe the lies but to seek the truth and and the truth may just be that we're just as bad as or mm -hmm. that we resemble or that we also believe a lie in other words why are people not pushing back to the tyranny mm -hmm. you know mm -hmm. it's because they're invested in the tyranny well it's it's like everybody seems to be fighting for their corner and uh I guess a lot, so many people have been ignored and this like this identity politics that's happened is kind of like separating everybody and no one's got a place no one's got a voice in what's happening so everyone feels that they need to like really shout their piece to assert their own sort of ways of thinking or what they want in life because they're not heard so it's like a you know trying to fight for your corner but really it's there's potential that your perception has been hijacked right so what you feel you're fighting for is not necessarily truly what you want but you've been indoctrinated with someone else's belief system so you you try and fight for that so you know i watched something before in the past that says if you um if you feel so emotionally charged on a topic that you're so angry it's likely that in a way you've been weaponized to pick that side or right? you, well you're definitely invested i mean into to that you know it, it's triggering your shadow yeah and 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 learning to deal with the shadow i had a like and 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 dreams are powerful tools for that i had a yeah. client once who was dreaming that uh, that um that she was hanging out with trump right and she was disgusted at the idea that she was partying with trump and so so i asked her the question what side of your personality is trump like right you know and and so then 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 if we're so angry at trudeau then really what part of our personality is trudeau like you know mm -hmm. what you know and the likeliness is that if i'm angry at something it's because i remember resemble it and in my shadow resembles it and you, you project know? it onto somebody else and and really when it comes down to it 
the way we approach our own practices, the way we approach life, the way we approach our philosophy of life is very trudeau like we're really shallow you know mm -hmm. we're really we're not really willing to do shadow work as a collective we're not really willing to see that we are greedy and that we live you know i mean mm -hmm. you know and that's what it's so angering is to see almost a caricature of ourselves and it's interesting you know the one previous politician that we had and and it's interesting you know we we went, we witnessed it in the States, you know, we went from uh, Trump, which we were really not very happy with. And then we went to uh, uh, Biden and we're really not happy with him, you know? So here's a pseudologia fantastica, you know, for kind of, it's interesting why we choose crazy leaders, you know? I think that that's a God to tell us something about ourselves. And it's yeah. the same thing with, you know, Harper and then Trudeau, you know, like, whoa, what does that say about us that we elect such people and that we're willing to stand for that? And so it, it, it's it's a it's a very interesting um, phenomenon to be able to look at our own shadow in that process and then to work at ourselves not being trump like mm -hmm. ourselves mm -hmm. not being trudeau like but to actually do the work of changing mm -hmm. and to realize that really we're not going to change anything if we're invested you know if we're invested mm -hmm. in the craziness if we're all into the craziness then it's not going to change. Mm -hmm. We have to change the way we live. And then naturally everything's going to change because we're changing. Yeah. Yeah. It seems that there's no compassion in the system. And so we need to develop compassion. I think I've said it before on one of these videos. Or I can't remember what, what planets made me think of that in the past, but yeah, there's, that seems to be what's lacking a lot. There's no compassion for everybody's suffering and what people are going through it's 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 really a moral and yeah. spiritual crisis we yeah. are actually like like uh like what's going on with uh you know taking advantage of the times and 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 you know and and feeding on the on the collective uh problems that are going on in terms of inflation but also the housing crisis housing crisis you know mm -hmm. you, you, you know why raise your rents just because everybody else is, else is doing, you know, and making it, you know, very, very difficult for people to live. Mm. And yes, you know, and so they're at a particular point there, the rich people have to have a little more compassion for those, you know, because see what we're, cre what we're creating is such an imbalance mm -hmm. socially that there's nobody that can do the lower jobs because they can't make a living. Mm -hmm. And so then we're really top heavy, the, the top people, the wealthy people, they have so much money and the poor have no hope and, uh, and the rich don't see that. And so mm -hmm. that's kind of the neurosis of our time and that pseudologia fantastica. We live a pseudo logic that is fantastic. Mm -hmm. We live a delusion and if we believe in the lie then we feed the lie mm -hmm. so that's a lot right there huh? <laughs> it's like yeah. oh plenty for people to start digging internally into and seeing what's going on inside right well that's that's uh and so what does it take to do the work you know we talk about doing the work and and my experience is that people are confronted my own self i'm confronted with the reality of doing the work and then we do everything that we can to avoid doing the work <laughs> yeah right distractions distractions well pseudologia fantastica <laughs> you know it's like uh, we're 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 all so invested in the craziness that we got no time for being sane mm -hmm. and so these doing the work means everything that we need to do to stay sane 
And these days, that's a full time job. <laughs> really is, eh? Uh-huh, yeah, uh-huh. yeah. So this was fun visiting yeah. with you guys. Uh, got to mm-hmm. you got to see the front yard. Uh, you got my potato patch over there, <laughs> and then my garlic patch. Garlic's going good. And then the iris, and I'm especially happy with my peony uh, there. And there's a couple other pink peonies there. And um, and thanks for visiting with us and for subscribing to the channel and for following our work. Any questions you have? Also, yeah, happy solstice to you. Mm-hmm. Uh, solstice is coming up. That's a really important time of the year. What What do you see the solstice as being? Ooh. Um, you put me on the spot there. <laughs> well, uh, yes, okay, all right. So let me put me on the spot. Then. Put yourself on the spot. Yeah. Uh, the solstice <laughs> is really one of the most important astrological event of the year. Mm-hmm. You know, the two solstices a year, one the shortest night, one the longest night. So summer solstice is the shortest night or the longest day, winter solstice is the shortest day or the longest night. You know, these mark major, major shift Mm -hmm. in nature that have to be honored. You know, so now from now on, from the solstice on, every day will become shorter and shorter. Mm -hmm. Now this longest day. And, And so taking some time to honor mother nature uh, in at the so, at the winter solstice at the summer solstice at the winter solstice being in touch with these um, cycles every day from the winter solstice to the summer solstice every day gets longer and longer and longer and longer and longer and so we our awareness our work everything get to come more and more and more and more and then boom Come to winter, summer solstice, and now, oh, every day is going to start. It's a major shift. Paying it's kind it. of crazy that it's all already coming upon us, really. <laughs> well, well, fast, fast moving. Absolutely, it doesn't Absolutely. even feel like we've got there, you know. <laughs> well, and also, like what I do at the winter solstice, at the winter solstice, is I tie my rope to the sun, right. and I, you know, and then there's a kind of a time of. You know, you're increasing, you know, you're, you know, so, you, you know, the energetics of it, you know, we're working really hard to create a reality now. Okay. Now it's like, okay, we made it to the top of the hill. Now we're going on the slow, the time to bring everything in, you know, mm-hmm. all the garden has been planted. Now there's going to be the harvest. There's going to be preserving. There's going to be canning. There's going to be preparing for winter, getting, you know, we, we are setting intentions for what we're going to do in the next six months. We got a couple of workshop series we're going to put out for you. We got a course that we're working on. There's so much that we're working on. And so then these shifts, these astrological shifts, summer solstice, winter solstice, the two equinoxes, those are the four principal points of the zodiac. They, uh, they form the very basis of the astrological um, discipline. So taking some time in a ritualistic fashion to honor, you know, do a little ritual, you know, throw, you know, you know, make some food for the ancestors, uh, um, honor mother nature, uh, um, be grateful, spend time in the garden, uh, do renewal uh, ceremonies, do a little sacred fire, um, get out in nature and um and uh celebrate your connection with mother nature because mm-hmm. if there's anything the main craziness of our time is that we're completely dissociated with natural cycles mm-hmm. so this is an opportunity for you to really tie your balloon to these uh, magical mm-hmm. um uh, <laughs> perfect order um of yeah. mother nature yeah nice good good place to uh wrap it up eh i think that's, that's a right good message <laughs> any thing you gotta share with our folks no man that was fantastic nice to be outside hopefully uh we get more to do outside again 
curious to see what you guys think of the of the of the of the picture yeah, and hopefully the microphone picks us up good and so let us know ask questions whatever and uh, comments down below yeah ask us anything subscribe all of that stuff you know <laughs> what to do we'll see you guys later always an honor always a pleasure mc starman here alan see you later whoop 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 where's the button <laughs> ah over there <laughs>